What's up guys? Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about forgiveness and sacrifice or letting things go that God wants you to let go. Um, I got a friend of mine, Leo Sanchez, fellow TikToking brother in Christ um, here that I'm gonna interview and we're gonna have this deep conversation about his testimony, his journey to Christ and I hope that it blesses you. I hope it really hits home for you guys. Um, anybody who needs to forgive, anybody who needs to let go of something that God wants you to let go of, um, I hope that this episode encourages you to do so. If you love it, please like and subscribe. And if you have a friend who needs to hear this, please share it with them. Thank you so much, guys, for your support. Um, I love you guys and enjoy. So we're going to get into this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited um, because I have a guest and his name is Leo Sanchez. Leo Sanchez was... Um, really just fell in our lap and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have met him already because I mean this is a really good brother of God um, Leo had a viral TikTok happen um, I think it got like over 140,000 likes or something like that um, and it was talking about your coming to Christ you know like that's that's what it was about like coming to Christ and like your past life and everything like that and um, I had a talk with Leo before this interview and um, I'm just very excited for this conversation Leo you want to say something to the people yeah hey what's going on everybody um, I'm Leo Sanchez from New Mexico and uh, yeah that you know uh, thank you for having me in this podcast mm. uh, you know I was excited to meet you uh, when when we talked a, a week ago and it's just uh, God just kind of does does things sometimes like this, you know, just puts people in your in your in your way for a reason. And um, yeah. I'm I'm excited for you to have more guests in the future, and I'm excited to be a part of this. And but yeah, the video the video that you're talking about is um, a testimony video that I released in April, and it, it's reached almost 800,000 people. So mm. it's been it's been impactful. Um, I, was, I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, I just knew, you know, somebody told me, hey. God gave you that platform, you know, what are you going to yeah. do with it? And that part. I just was convicted. I was convicted to share what God has done in my life. And after two years since it happened, I finally decided to release it and glory to God for the amount of people that have been impacted yeah. uh, through, through that video, you know, and since then just, I've been able to create a, you know, a platform to be able to share what God has done, you know, little testimonies here and there. And, the amount of people that have came to Christ this year through that. So mm, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, not for real. Like I seen it. Um, I'll make sure like, you know, we put it like on the YouTube and everything like that, but um, like for this clip and you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, bro. I'm, I'm really happy that that happened. I, I love how TikTok has become a real platform for Christians. Like, you know, Christian TikTok personally, you know, I love it. You know, I know it's like some, you know, some people are kind of corny, but like, <laughs> but no, <laughs> yeah. like I, I love how it's become a platform to really spread the gospel. And like, you know, thanks to people like you um, and God using people like you, um, you know, souls are being saved, just like you said. Yep. Yep. So um, Leo has a topic for today and we're going to start this conversation and it has to do with how, like you said, you said people can be their own blessing blockers can you explain that for me yeah so back in april again i you know going into this uh tiktok i guess you can call it ministry at the beginning but um i, I didn't really know what i was walking into uh mm -hmm. uh you know somebody has shared with me hey you know this is what god gave you and what are you going to do with it and yeah. i've always tried before i was saved i always tried to like focus on trying to build you know uh, a YouTube channel and try to get famous and all that kind of stuff. And it, which has never happened. And I would always be frustrated with myself, but uh, this year, you know, finally, you know, being saved and I've always tried to be, I always try to be famous. I've always tried to like, like try to do stuff to like mm -hmm. put myself out there, but it just would never work out. But uh, that when I got saved, you know, uh, I was broken. I was lost. I was, you know, just this, you know how they say, you know, uh, God goes for that for that one. He leaves ninety nine behind to go get that one. It's like that's how yeah. I felt. You know, um, I I I was going through a very rough storm in my life, and just God mm. pulled me and and took me, you know, with open arms. And um, I started just focusing on Him and and started going to church. And you know, I was raised Catholic. I was raised being mm. Catholic, but 
when when all this happened to me and of course i'll share more of my testimony later but mm. um i didn't know what was going on you know i don't know why i was at church i don't know why i was getting pastored by this pastor but um it was just a, a transformation god was trying to do in my life and uh you know healing started happening and when it was time for me to finally give my life to god and really get baptized it was mm. a scary thing because i was like my parents are Catholic. What are they going to think? Mm, but God right. knew what he was doing. And yeah. uh, my parents accepted it 100%. And Amen. because of that, because of that, yeah, my parents have actually like came to Christ. My parents have actually given their life to Jesus. And it's like, that's how beautiful God works, right? And yeah. so, so throughout that whole time, focusing on myself, trying to make sure to start building that relationship with God, um, you know, a pandemic happened this year quarantine happened everybody was bored out of their minds <laughs> in, right. in march yes uh, i'm one of people i just <laughs> i just knew uh you know i like creating content i like creating videos and yeah. i was doing the same thing again i was focused on trying to like uh make videos to get famous again or get people to re you know look at me whatever and a friend came by and said yo like you know god gave this platform you know, what are you going to do with it? Like share what God has done for you and, and speak to the person that you were, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Like, yeah. I was like, damn, that, that night when I went to bed, I got convicted and I was yeah. like, that's, that's true. And so I started posting here and there. And after my fifth video posting Christian content, yeah, uh, that's when I went viral. And, and so then God just pretty much slapped me in the face and said, when you focus on me, everything else will fall into place. He knows the desires of our hearts. And so yeah. now I don't want to be famous. I want God to be famous. You that know? Part, I want no, I feel <laughs> exactly. Like uh, now it's like I put myself aside where before it was about me. It was about what I wanted to do. Yeah. Right. But in this process, you know, really understanding a relationship with God, uh, going back to talking about, you know, forgiveness and letting go. Mm -hmm. It's been tough, you know, uh, to make my little testimony short, I, I was mm. a dad of twins. I was in a relationship for seven years, uh, mm. you know, the mm. way society makes it. Get, get with somebody, hook up right away, move in with them, have kids, maybe possibly get married. It's like, that's kind of how society is nowadays. Yeah, you know? no facts. But uh, being in this relationship, you know, uh, when they were born, I was, I went through the whole pregnancy, all that kind of stuff at seven months old, July 21st, 2018, I go, I got broken up with not only that, I got told, Hey, the twins might not be yours. Man. And it was the hardest thing. It was, it hurt me. It, it devastated me. My parents were grandparents for the first time. My brothers were uncles for the first time. It was just, oh. some, yeah. So it was, you know, my mom gave pretty much everything to, you know, my ex, like, helped her with everything and it was just like she she was always there you know and <clears throat> to do that you know when I had to tell her it was so devastating but my mom was actually the strong one she right away was like I don't care I don't care you know how you know I just know you're gonna overcome this like she just Amen. straight up just said I know you're gonna overcome this but uh you know uh my my ex pretty much took the girls out of town never saw them again uh, moved to another state, uh, cut me off for like two months. But within those two months, I was going crazy, trying to do court stuff, all that kind of stuff. But that's when I got, started going to church, you know, and uh, that because of that moment, because of that, um, people will often call it, you know, why would God do something like this? Or why would, you know, why would this happen? And it's like, mm. it's, it, God will do things sometimes like that because, you might not know what he's doing at that moment because it's like, why is this happening? But he knows our past, our, our present and our future. Yeah. So <laughs> he knew what was going to happen. He's the year, orchestrator. You know? he, he allows, exactly. he allows certain things to happen. He allows us to go through trials and tribulations, but it's, you know, like Romans eight twenty eight, like all things work together for our good to those who love God. So I feel yep. you on that. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, um, it, when 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 that happened to me it, you know i again i didn't know what god was doing but i just knew this is where i had to go and yeah. you know i've gotten to a point where i had nothing else but to go to god and so <clears throat> in the process of all that fast forward to february 2019 i found out the twins were mine you know i got paternity test done we didn't mm. you know i had to close that i had to close that door 
a lot of yeah. people in that video that I posted on TikTok, they're like, but what about the twins? Why don't you see them? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <clears throat> I can't, I don't, I, I, I love them. I always would, you know, I told her I would always be there for them, but mm. I had to close that door because I didn't want to hurt my family anymore. I don't want, I don't want them, you know, what if I did accept them in? What if I yeah. did allow them to be part of my life still? They can be taken away in any minute, you know? And so yeah. I had to do what was best for me and for my family, you know? And so cutting that door, closing that door, letting go of something like that. Yeah. It, it seven year relationship, you know? Uh, you had you had you were a father, first time father with this person, and it, and God literally was like confirmation through my pastor, confirmation through my mom. Hey, you need to let go of this because right. I have more for you. Yeah, and it, that that's when the whole letting go process started for me, uh, because there's since that time of me letting go, I have learned more to let go of things that. Are gonna cause pain are gonna hurt yeah but you have to be obedient to what this holy spirit tells you so let's let's um let's take it back a little bit so there's two things sure. that you said that people you know when people become their own blessing blockers you said it's two things that they have to you know two concepts that they have to understand the first one was forgiving and the second one was mm -hmm. letting go so you talking about how like forgiving pertain to your um, interaction with, you know, your ex and mm -hmm. having to go through what you would consider maybe like a betrayal or just whatever that whatever you define that as. Um, so my question to you is, you know, how like were there any practical steps that you took? Like, you know, I feel like a lot of people nowadays in our society, forgiving is kind of like so foreign you know like mm -hmm. i feel like most of us we just want to cut people off and wish them the worst right so do you have any like type of practical steps because even sometimes i have trouble with that you know so what <laughs> what what were some practical things that you did to getting to a place where you can forgive someone um who has done you that way um that's a good question so mm -hmm. for for me um you know, I honestly didn't forgive my ex till like sometime last year. So it took a while, you know, <clears throat> sometimes people won't forgive people for a very long time because they hold on to that grudge. Yeah. But I think just building <clears throat> and focusing on God and building a relationship with him and understanding who Jesus was like Jesus. Yes, he died on the cross for our sins, but he, it wasn't just that. Like people just say, oh, that's who Jesus is. But no, Jesus is more than that. Jesus is somebody that had that walked this earth, that uh, became, you know, came into this earth as a slave. You know, he he came into this place as uh, a humble mm. person, and yet Rejecting he could have came in reputation. as a exactly. He yeah. could have came into this world as a king. Like I mean, he he was a king, but like as this a miraculous, physical, yeah, exactly, and. The way he was going about things and sharing, you know, what, what God, God's word and everything, and and then showing people what it is to forgive, like, like the whole the whole fact of him dying for our, for our sins, like, and understanding what why he did that and the relationship building with him, like, it kind of starts molding your heart, you know, your 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 God starts like stretching you, God starts doing things in your life that make you start, you get a revelation, you know. Yeah. Um. I I would start seeing that like i would still act a certain way when i would hear about her or i would mm. i was still like having that pain still in here and again i wasn't able to surrender a hundred percent to god that feeling i was just so gonna was ask a, you that like have you yeah. have you relapsed like you know are there times where like I, I believe that you you know you've forgiven her and stuff like that but are those times where like you relapse and like things start playing back in your head for me it's hard because like when I'm really, you know, hurt by somebody, I'll play it back in my head a million times and it just continues to hurt me. So, like, have you relapsed from that forgiveness and have you had to re-forgive and re-forgive, you know, like, has, has that happened? <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, is uh, I think when, because she cut me off, like, from her life for two months, mm -hmm. when I got saved and everything like that, four or five months later, I told her, we talked and everything, I said, I forgive you. Good. I told her, I yeah. forgive you. And it was great, whatever. But did I really forgive her? No, mm, I was just no. saying it just to <laughs> just to make sure I feel good. I mean, make sure it's there, you know. 
Make sure but, that you 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 don't have any case against God. No, I've done the exact same thing before, man. I've I've told yep. the person like I forgive you in person. Like it was like the next day, you know. I told him, I forgive you, but I didn't actually forgive that person for probably a year mm -hmm. later. Yeah, yeah. And so and so like that was one. And then uh, the after after she told me that the twins were mine and and the the paternity test happened and all that, I mm. tried to forgive her as well. At least I thought I forgave her. Still nothing, man. It was just more, you 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 more like talk. think you for yeah more talk. And then it wasn't until I had this moment where I just I've never really spent alone time with God. What I mm -hmm. mean by that is like go somewhere, cut off cut off the noise, turn off your cell phone, just mm. sit there in the silence. And I was. Through confirmation, God just told me, go sit in a hill, turn off your car, turn off worship music, just literally sit there silent. Yeah. And it was one of the most impactful thing that I, it was, it was one of the most things that like most impactful thing that I did in my life because sitting there in the quiet, I said, God, I'm here. Yeah. Like it was my first time doing that. And God just literally started throwing images in my head. And I have my yeah. eyes closed and he takes me like, and this is so real. And people are like, like, well, how, how can that happen? I'm like, but this is who God is. Yeah. He took me to the place where I was living with her and I did not feel her. Like I did not see her. Sorry. I did not see her there. I did not see the twins, but I can feel the presence there. Mm. I can feel them in that, in that room. And, and while I was like closing my eyes and God was just like moving. And while I was there, I, since I can feel her, God just tell, told me right then and there. He goes, forgive her. And I was like, Phew. I was like, no, God, like, this not is what sorry. You yeah. yeah. And, and then he goes, forgive her. Forgive her. And like more, it got more intense to where I was crying and I was just like, cr like sobbing. You know, have you ever cried and just, I mean, boogers coming out, everything. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? That. Talking about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. And so just like bawling and, and, and God just kept telling me, forgive her, forgive her. And then it got to a point where I was, I didn't want to be there anymore in that place. Mm. And God was just like, and, and so I just started saying, I forgive her, God, I forgive her, I forgive her, I forgive her. And literally like, I was like, okay, God, like, get me out of this. Like, I, I, I just, I forgive her, you know? And I just, that's when I really surrendered and I forgave her. Yeah. And because of me forgiving her, mm -hmm. God literally took me even deeper to a root of a childhood, like of, of what I had dealt with as a child. And that's mm -hmm. when God said, because you're forgiving her, now we get to work in, on you in, in the mm -hmm. things that you hold on to since you were a little kid. And it blew my mind because I was like, what the heck, man? Like, this is, this was just crazy. You know, it was such a, uh, my, his presence was in my car there alone. Nobody else, you know, just got me and him. And it, it was something that I just knew uh, God was just wanting me to do that before the end of the year, because I was in, and the funny thing, I was in a relationship. Okay. And this is after your. And, right. Mm -hmm. So after 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 I found out the twins were mine, I, I have this cycle where I kind of jump into another relationship after a breakup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did that Christian relationship, of course, but um, I just did it to fill in the hole yeah. that was missing. And so in that time, you know, with her being there and all that kind of stuff, I just she, you know, I went ahead and. So forgave my ex, um, the one, you know, the one I had the twins with and the process kind of started happening to where, uh, God was starting to show me things from my heart that I had that I didn't even know about. And he'll start, I would start crying like in different places and like, I'll start getting home and I'm just like crying and I'm like, dang God, like, why are you showing me these things? But it's because he yeah. was trying to really, when you forgive somebody or when you finally a hundred percent forgive somebody, you you get to finally start healing. Oh, like yeah. that's well, that's when true healing really starts is when you officially surrender it to God like that. True healing starts. And how funny was it that this happened in October of 20, uh, 2019 mm -hmm. and I forgave. And then I was still in that relationship and the Holy Spirit was like, 
hey, I need you to leave this relationship because I have more this coming up year for you. Right. I said, no, God, I don't want to. I want what my flesh wants. Uh, straight up, you know, how many times have we done that? You know, how many times have we denied God? You know, right. it, it's it's crazy, you know. And so yeah. I I went into um, I, I went into you know this relationship still, and it wasn't until like December finally God came again and said, "Hey, I need you to let go of this of this person. Like, you need healing. She needs healing." I really need to work in your guys' life, but you guys got to let go. And I let go of that relationship. It was hard. It was one of the hardest things, again, to do. But I had to trust God. I had to start being obedient to him. And it was because I forgave my ex. That revelation, healing, all that stuff was coming into play, which made mm. me realize I need to let go of this person. I right? want to actually stick a verse in there. Um, because okay. I feel you on that. I feel like there's a reason why once we forgive, the healing process starts. There's a reason why once we forgive, God's able to communicate with us more. Uh, I want to go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. It says, but if we, if we forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Um, and when ye stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So mm. when I read that, I see that, you know, God wants us to forgive other people just the same way we do. And it's really helped me personally to realize that, you know, people have done bad things to us. Right. And it's just mm. like and we feel terrible. But we we don't think about how God feels once we are the ones, you know, doing the same thing to him. If not, you know, multiple times, multiple times through our entire life, some of us every single day, you know. Yep. Um, and what I see in this in this place is that, like, you know, in order for him to forgive us, we have to forgive others, you know. And if that's the case, then not forgiving builds a wall between us and our relationship with God. You know, it, yeah. it could be that God had been been wanting to heal you from your situation, but it couldn't happen until he forgave you of your sins. You know what I'm saying? Because the Bible says you had iniquity in your heart. He's not going to hear you. He needed to forgive right. you. He needed to forgive you of your sins, but you weren't forgiving somebody else of their sins against you. And it's just like when we forgive that wall of separation of between us and God, it's it's down. So now yes. God can have access to our hearts. You know, now God can communicate with us. And just like you said, you went from yep. forgiving to now he's molding you all over again and telling you, let this go, let this go. So I'm sorry, continue with your story. Continue. You now yeah. let this um, this other relationship go because you realize right. that it was a substitute. Like it was it was just filling up a hole. So exactly. Continue, and, and then that person that I was with, it was and that's a good uh, honesty. Like what you're saying, is it's it's amazing because. Um, it actually brought me to what I was about to say too, so it's mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Um, but uh, that person was a, a good person. Not they weren't bad or anything like that. But it was just like she knew that we both had to let go of each other, and it was it was amazing. But okay, that's going great. To, going to what you're saying, yeah. Um, you know, the main thing is, and I tell people this, and I actually told somebody yesterday. I said, look, if you understand, you know, when you come to Christ and you start feeling God's presence. And you start seeing how God loves you, mm -hmm. no matter how you look, no matter your past, no matter anything, God yeah. loves you yeah. and you feel his love. Yeah. You start understanding that he forgave you for everything you've done. Yeah. So because he forgave you and we always talk about we need to be Christ like and we need to walk like Jesus walked and all that kind of stuff. All right. OK, well, then why can't we forgive others if yeah. God if you've seen God forgive you, if you have seen God work in your life and actually forgive you for what you've done and accepted you with open arms, why can't we forgive other people and accept other people with open arms? Why can't we love one another? Why can't we, you know, why is there that wall again? Yeah. That wall is not is with God too, but also can be with other people, friendships and fruitful oh, friendships yeah. that God is trying that. to bring in your life. You know what I mean? And so... We going in that route and you said it earlier and you mentioned the word and blessing blockers like you are your own blessing blocker. Now, that mm -hmm. that word did not come from me. That actually came from my friend that told me, hey, this platform that you're using, why aren't you using for you know, glorify God? 
which was a random person never met oh, they just really? shared that wow. yeah they just shared that with me mm. and <laughs> it, again it's crazy how god just puts people in your life that you know are gonna help you in your walk yeah and the blessing blocker thing man it's one of the things that i've realized so much and people have realized so much we i i've i've told people this image um like i used to do bible studies and all that mm -hmm. but like this is how i show people is have you seen the picture of and maybe you could put it up but it's it's the picture of jesus with the little bear oh and yeah i know what you're talking about the, and the little girl <laughs> the little and girl, the little yeah. girl uh-huh is like she has uh sorry with the the teddy it's jesus bear with his hand out yeah, mm -hmm. it's Jesus with his hand out and the girls with the little teddy bear. And she's like, no, like, I don't want to give this. This is my teddy yeah. bear. But he has such a bigger teddy bear behind his back. Yeah. And he, all he's saying is, like, give this to me, right? All right? And I've always shown that image to people because it's like, that's right there an example of you being your own blessing blocker. You, How many times have you not want to let go of something because yeah. it, you you just, it makes you feel comfortable. It makes you feel like this is this is your identity. This is yeah. who, I, who I am and all that. But you don't know that actually God is trying to bless you even bigger. God is trying to provide for you even more. The prayers that you've prayed for for years, he's about to answer. But you are your own blessing blocker and you are not allowing God to bless you. And so when you finally let go of that, whatever it is, yeah. maybe you let go of a relationship. Maybe you let go of, uh, of, of, a, of an addiction. Maybe you let go of an emotion even. Um you give you get these blessings in your life you know i forgave last year my ex i let go of the relationship i was in god called me into an intentional single season this year because again my cycles have always been relationship to relationship to relationship mm. that's how i knew life was that's just how i was with grace you know yeah and knowing that um I was going into this year single, I was afraid. God even said at the end of the year, he goes, I need you to spend New Year's alone. And that was hard for me. I'm a not going person. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a person that likes to hang out with people. And God just said, I need you to spend time with me. So it's because I forgave, because I let go of, uh, I, I, because I forgave my ex, because I let mm -hmm. go of the relationship I was in, yeah. Uh, through people, God was just confirming and telling me, you need to go into this year as, an, as a single person. I need you to go mm -hmm. intentionally single. And uh, it was a scary thing for me because I'm an outgoing person. I like to go yeah. out. I like to hang out with friends. I like to be out and about. And uh, God was literally putting me in an uncomfortable spot. And w w the, the biggest thing was, is he said, I need you to spend New Year's Eve single. Like, Going into this year, I need, I'm sorry, not single. I needed to go into this alone. year alone. Mm -hmm. Spend time alone and, and with me yeah. for New Year's Eve. My parents were going to go have like a family get together. And I was like, guys, like, I know this is kind of weird, but I need to do this thing. My mom freaked out. She goes, are you okay? Are you, is everything fine? I'm like, yes, mom. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, mom, God just, I just need I like to do this mom. for God. <laughs> <laughs> she literally she thought because she's always concerned you know and she she thought like i was maybe depressed and everything like that or maybe mm. going through something you know but i just told her i was like because i've never done this i've never been by myself for new year's eve or anything yeah. like that so i told her i was like look i gotta do this she agrees she's fine with it and going into this year like that uh <laughs> it it was such a hard thing for me you know, again, because I have that say, I have had that cycle of always being in a relationship back to back. This this year, God really put me in this place to to start healing, to really because and again, this is how funny it goes. I forgave, I let go. When I forgave, God started moving even more, showing me roots. Right, I let go yeah. of the relationship that I was in that I I knew I shouldn't be in, and because I did those things, He now was even moving even more to start healing everything that I had in my heart. And right. going into this year, it, it you know, as we're coming to an end, I'm grateful to God. I, I, I mm. actually tell God every day. I said, look, God, sometimes people will say, oh, why did God do that? Why did, why did he do this? Why did he do that? But yeah. I tell God, God, thank you 
for putting me through that. Thank you for taking away those twins from my life. Like, and people say, that's harsh. Why would you say, thank you, God, for taking those twins from my life? It's not that I don't love them or care for them. It's that because of that moment, God moved in my life. God literally has done miracles in my life. Restoration has happened in my family. Oh, I'm happy you said that word. (laughs) I'm happy you said that word. Almost like renewal. Yes. Everything. You know, I have. Um, I'm sorry to cut you off, but no, you're good. I I have a verse, of course. <laughs> I had one. I had one too. So I'll let you okay. share yours first. Okay, I'm gonna share mine, then you can share yours. Cool. Um, let's see. What if it's the same? Luke nine, Luke yeah. nine twenty three. Um, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, and he said, he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. And I think that that's a perfect explanation for what you went through. Where you didn't want to let go. You wanted to save your life in a sense. And, you know, God said, you know, let let us deny ourselves. Denying ourselves has become something that we don't even talk about anymore. You know, our generation, we want to do whatever we want, when we want, we want to chase our dreams, we want to do like, but the thing is, we don't understand that God is the omnipotent, omnipotent, omniscience, something like that, omniscience yeah. God, who has already preordained us to good works, who knows the beginning from the end, because he is the beginning and he is the end. And yep. we don't understand that he knows better. You know, so it's like, if he's telling us to let something go at the time, it's like, we can't connect the dots. But after we actually let that thing go, you realize you realize firsthand that your life was now better. You were in a better position. And when you decided to let your life go for the sake of Christ, you know, you were saved, as you would say. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm happy you said renewal. I'm happy you said restoration because like, you know, it talks about Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. This is the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the power of having a relationship with God through Christ. The fact that we have a orchestrator that is orchestrating our lives according to his glorification and according to the good plans that he has for us. You know, and the moment that we finally acquiesce. The moment we finally acquiesce, like I have my own. I remember I used to have my hoop dreams in school, all that different stuff. I am five eight, bro. <laughs> I'm five. I'm five eight too. And I had no dribble, <laughs> and I had no. So it's, <laughs> it wasn't gonna happen. But it's like the moment I let that go, like in my own life, you know, doors opened up, and it wasn't until four years later, you know what I'm saying? But like doors opened up, and like unassociated came to the lab, and like a year later, right. Church Boy Confessions comes to the lab. It's like God knows what He's doing you know yeah. like and yeah. it can be fear sometimes you know it can be mm-hmm. um our own lust sometimes and stuff like that mm-hmm. and but it's just like when you know who god is when you know who god is when you know who whose side he's on when you know his love for you letting go although it's always going to be hard but letting go you recognize that th- it, it, this is a blessing God is directing my life. Letting go is God orchestrating my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like what you said, because, um, Mm. you know, we, we, we get so stubborn to, to really understand really what God is doing. Yeah. But the beautiful part about God, and I realized this more than ever this, this year is that we get a choice. Like, Mm. this is how God is. Like he, uh, he gives us a choice to choose him or our flesh. Yeah. And he'll say, all right, son or, or daughter, <laughs> go ahead, do what you want to do. Yeah, I'll be here. And this is what grace is right here. This is what grace is. I'll be here waiting for you with open arms again. Mm, amen. And I've, I've, when I've came back to him, cause I've came back, I've, I've gone out to the world, came back, gone out to the world, came back. You know, I mean, how many people do that? You know? Uh, yeah. people talk about lukewarm Christians, you know what I mean? It's like, we got to be an intentional Christian nowadays, you know? And, yeah. um, intentional. when, right. uh-huh, when, when I came back, when I come, when I come back to him, I remember, I remember crying. I remember just like in his presence because like, God, I literally, and I know, I don't know 
I say it this way for myself, but like this is the way I look at it when I do this. It's like me spitting at his face in a way, like when I do mm, what I want. I know yeah. it's a little harsh. I know it's a yeah. little like but it's like me literally turning my back on him and being like, you know what, God, like, I feel like this is what I should do. And when I come back because of that, now that, that I put that in my head, it's like, I cry and I just, I'm in his presence there because he still loves me, even yeah. though I treated him like crap. He still yeah. loves me, even though I didn't give him the time, you know, he still uh, gives me his grace, even though I decided what my flesh wanted to do. Yeah. And that's where I realized, like, I, I don't want to keep doing that to God. You know, I don't want to keep doing that to God. Like, because I want to really, him. exactly, I love him. And and the best thing to, and this is the main thing that I've told people in the past too, is when you start building a relationship with God, because you letting go, you forgiving helps you start building a relationship with him because now yeah. he's actually going in there and you're connecting with him and it's just an overwhelming feeling yeah your relationship with him starts building starts growing and the foundation that you have gets starts getting built yeah he starts becoming your foundation and the thing is is uh um shoot <laughs> it just really <laughs> like space my brain does that, that <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Now that you have um, a relationship with God, you've let go, you've forgiven. Yeah, your relationship and with God. so, so with me having the foundation as mm-hmm. as Him, um, I I have been able to, um, dude, I swear, oh my gosh, like I just I had it again and it just went away. I don't know what my brain is doing. I feel like I know where you're going, so let me see if I can like pick up from there. Like now that you, it's almost like building, you know, the the parable where it's like one guy built on sand, one guy built on on the rock. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Um, was I on the right track? Yeah, it, it kind okay. of. It, it, it's ahead. it's pretty much because I have him as my foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm building this relationship with him. I'm learning to what really a relationship is, right? I'm learning uh, to love, to have time with him, to just know who he is. And if my relationship with God is good, like if me and him are like in sync, then my relationships with others friends boyfriends girlfriends like you know all that kind of stuff boyfriends i say for the girls by the way (laughs) (laughs) this is clear it up just a clear clear (laughs) clear um your relationships with others are going to flourish your relationship with your mom Mm, and dad and your bosses are going to flourish because you have learned what relationship is with christ and the Mm, funny thing is i tell people is like if your relationship with god is good Mm. then your relationship with others is good what did i just sign a cross Mm. like you know what i mean and it, and it's a beautiful thing and people need to understand that look it, it take as long as you want to to forgive take as long as you want to to let go but i i tell people this how many days are left in the year we have like like 20 some 20 oh like 18 13, if i were to tell 18. you or for anybody that's listening if mm. i were to tell you every you know the prayers that you've been praying this year the the healing that you've been asking for for your family the restoration you've been asking for your family um the next level that you want to go into your business uh if i if i were to tell you hey there's 20 some days left in the year if you can forgive something that you've been holding on to for like the longest time and try to find a let go of maybe a relationship maybe an addiction or anything like that before the end of the year by you doing that God is going to start blessing you with uh, restoration in your family. God is going to start blessing you with another level in your in your business. God is going to heal you. God is going to heal you from depression. God's going to heal you from anxiety, all that stuff. If I were to tell you right now, hey, if you forgive and let go of this, this, and this, this will happen. Will you do it? Right. The answer is, yeah, of course I will. Okay. Then God doesn't need to tell you those things, right? Because see how easy it is i can just say yes of course i'll do it yeah but when god is secretive about it and he doesn't share what he's going to do with us that's that's why he does that is because we have to choose and we again going back to denying our flesh and going into this year saying okay i forgive this and i let go and i trust because it is god's promise god promised me that he's gonna do this 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 and this you know I am going to trust by me forgiving and letting go of this person. God is going to move this year. 
and it's a hard thing to do you hard. how how can you trust in something you don't see how can yeah. you trust in in these things you know and it's funny because it's like there's air that we breathe in every day how are we trusting that that's keeping us alive you know i'm going to bed trusting that my body's gonna keep me alive right the way we trust those things is the way we should trust god like god yeah. is who um he says he is he, exactly exactly he's gonna do exactly. what he said he's gonna do exactly and and one of the you know with the whole when i was saying like my twins you know um, I, the twins i had i'm glad that happened i'm glad to, god took that away i'm glad to, god took away the relationship i'm glad to, glad uh god took away the addiction uh, the verse that I was wanted to share with you was uh, Job one, J- Job chapter one, verse twenty. Uh, a little bit further down, verse twenty, and it says, um, "The God gives and the God takes away, and God gives, God takes away." Sorry, mm. oh, sorry. Or, I don't know if you can. Hear no, me. you're good. You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, my God gives and God takes away, mm-hmm. and when He gives and takes away, we should praise Him still, and so. Mm the thing that I've realized more again this year is no matter what God does, if he takes away something, if he gives me something, my hurt might have pain temporarily, but I'm going to praise God. Amen. I'm going to keep praising God. I'm going to yeah. keep worshiping. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep doing these things in the storm yeah. because let's, let's, let me be real with you guys <laughs> real quick. We will have storms until God calls us home. Period. Okay. Yeah. You, you, we have to really understand that because the storm, we always say, oh, when is, uh, I can't wait till the storm is over. Like I'm going through the storm, it's da, 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 but I can't wait to get out of the storm. Okay. But why aren't you focusing instead of saying like, why am I in this? Why am I in the storm or whatever? Why aren't you telling God like, God, what are we doing here? Yeah. Reveal what am I supposed like, to game What are you this? trying to do? Exactly. Yeah. And then know that, okay, that storm passes for a moment and then boom, you're back into another storm. You got to understand that these things are going to happen and you got to embrace it instead of just being there and just kind of like in your own, and I say it this way, in your own pity party. Yeah. You know, why are you there? Just this is happening to me and I can't believe it. And then it is like, no embrace your season embrace the storm embrace it because you're gonna miss it if you didn't embrace it you're gonna miss out on what god is doing if you don't miss it (laughs) or stay there exactly (laughs) and and the thing is is like look the more storms you're in and more you're in the valley i'd rather be more in the valley than in the hill because that's where character gets built that's when um uh you get molded that's when leadership comes about that's when uh you, know, you show you start... thing show your preparation exactly and yeah. because you're getting attacked more it's because the enemy doesn't want you to progress the enemy yeah. doesn't want you to keep you know go to the next level he doesn't yeah. want you to forgive that person he's a, he doesn't want you to let go of that yep. person because he wants to keep you in a comfortable spot oh yeah but when is it that you're when are you going to finally be tired of that when are you going to finally be like you know what okay i need to do something i need to just let go i need to forgive i am ready to finally really surrender to god because i'm ready just to start my healing process no matter how long it takes my season for singleness is coming to an end and what does that mean am i going to go out there and start dating and going out you know I now I'm single, not intentionally, but now I'm still in a relationship with God. I'm still healing. Still, there's still roots that God is still taking out, yeah. pulling them out, healing those roots. And yeah, it's again, life is life as a Christian is a process. It's not easy. It's not. It's not. It's not going to be easy. Um, this is why it's a choice, you know. And yeah. I rather choose. I rather choose this life than my past life. And I'm glad God found me at age 26. Uh, you know, most people have grown up Christian. Most people have been in church all their lives. But for God to call me at 26 years old, now I'm 28 now. And what has happened in just two years, 
if this is mm-hmm. what has happened in two years by me focusing on God, I'm I'm ready. Like, what else you got, God? Let's let's go into this next year, to this next level that God is calling me. You know, Amen. That's so. <laughs> that's that's. I it's just that's... something. No, I was going to say, I think that that, like, was a cherry on top, bro. I feel like you did it. <laughs> yep. I feel like you did it. Um, yep. So I I love this. I feel like, you know, for everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching, you know, my boy Leo, um, through his story, I hope that, you know, what, what, take, what, what you can take away from this conversation was that, you know, there's things that we can do. That, that we are positions that we are in that could potentially be blocking what God wants to be doing in our lives, you know, and um, two of those things are forgiving and letting go two things that we need to deny ourselves in order to do two things that we need to trust God in order to do. And these are things that, you know, if you're in the position where it's like, you know, you need to let go, you need to trust God, whatever. I mean, you need to um, forgive and stuff. Do recognize that these things may be impossible for you, but all things are possible with God. You didn't do it by yourself, Leo. I have I know in my life I've never done it by myself, but it comes with God's help. Um, so if our hearts are settled, um, what I want to do, Leo, is I want to pray for you. And then I'm going to pray for um, everybody watching, everybody listening. Um, and yeah, cool. Awesome. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for this time that you've given us all to just have this conversation, for people to listen to this conversation, to watch this conversation, Lord. Um, and I pray, Lord, that the words that were spoken, Lord, here today, God, really be stained in the back of each and every one of our heads, oh God, and that it be for our edification, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Thank you for Leo um, to share his testimony, Father God, because you didn't allow those things to happen in vain. But now this testimony has saved people's souls, God. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that it continues to do so. I thank you for Leo, and I pray you continue to be with him, Lord, in this season of singleness, a season you know, of letting things go, of continuing to forgive and all that, Lord. And I just pray you please strengthen him, God, on his walk, Lord Jesus. Strengthen him in his ministry, oh God. Um, he will decrease and you will increase, Lord Jesus. Um, use his mouth, use his lifestyle to be a testament of your glory, oh God, and help him, Lord Jesus, continue to draw men and women unto you. Um, and I pray for the people that are listening, oh God, people that are watching, oh God, I pray please help them, Father God, to forgive, help them to let go, Lord Jesus, help them um, to do these things and help them to recognize that it also comes with a dependency on you, um, help them to no longer be their own enemy, be their own blocker, Lord Jesus, and help them, Father God, to restore um, their relationship with you and bring renewal, bring restoration to different parts of their life, Lord God, and show them who you are, show them your goodness, show them your kindness, show them your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Leo, I want to thank you once again, man. I I really appreciate this. This was amazing, dude. For real. Awesome. No, yeah. I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, this is, you know, new for me. This is something that put me in an uncomfortable spot. I've never done something like this. And I just know uh, sometimes you have to do uncomfortable things. And uh, you get out of your comfort zone because that's how you grow. That's how character gets built. And again, I, I want to be molded by God. I want to I want to be stretched by God, and just uh, I appreciate you allowing me to be use this platform with you here to share this, you know. And um, it again, this life isn't easy, but just if you trust in God and really rely on on Him, and all the answers you need are here. That part, they will always always they be are there. Here. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, you know I'll, I'll sit there sometimes and be like. God, please, like, help me with this, help me with that, reveal this, reveal that to me. And it's like, it's right in front of you. Yeah. Open it up and read it. So. Love it. All right, bro. Appreciate you, man. Love you, man. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Church Board Confessions. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Mm-hmm.